So you you woke up one day and thought, oh, I know, I could build something like Lego Hive. Well, it's with the architect's uh, psychology, isn't it? Right, How right. can this be improved? How can we do more with less? Ah, right. But Mr. Fuller, you know, yes. doing more with less is a secret of all scientific uh, advances. Yes, yes, yes. Do more with less. Hi, this is Phil Chandler with a, another video. Um, long, long overdue video, should I say. And I'm presently in the county of Somerset in southwest England and I'm at the, an apiary belonging to a chap called James who, who wishes to remain otherwise anonymous. Uh, this uh, chap here is Bill Summers who's um, the inventor of the, the Zest Hive and he's going to be here talking about the uh, well about all sorts of things but including the Zest Hive he's going to explain that to us um, and there are also a number of really interesting and unusual looking hives here which James is going to give us some commentary on. This looks on the face of it like a stack of na a national supers uh, on top of some bricks. <laughs> so James can yeah. tell us what's going on here. This is um, uh, taken from Bill's idea of the thermalite blocks is to keep the humidity high in the lower chamber where the bees actually breed to, your brood frames to and using your woodenware on top to um, for a honey crop. Right, so what's in the bottom box then in terms of frames? Just nationals, just okay. nationals, and um, the humidity up it was up to 89% humidity in there, which I believe helps the varroa and the treatment-free side of the varroa. Okay, well, we're going to have a, an ongoing discussion about humidity, because this is a, this is a theory that um, high humidity uh, slows down the reproduction cycle of varroa mites. That's the, that's what we're, we're we've led to believe by um, scientists who've done the, done the science. Um, I notice, James, that you've got um, in terms of the frames in the bottom box, as it were, you've got a high entrance. What's your theory there? Uh, the theory is uh, humidity is like it acts as a bucket. So the, you have a bucket of humidity, and it's not leaking out through the bottom of the hive. It just sort of sits there. And, um, so you get a better, uh, on a higher humidity level than if you had um, entrance at the, at the bottom. Okay, that's interesting. So, in terms of the supers, it's effectively a low entrance, but in terms of the brood area, it's a, it's, higher, it's a high higher entrance. entrance. Yeah, yeah. and okay. also they've got corks, so I can close down uh, entrances and have a higher humidity or lower humidity, and also it acts as a bit of a wasp terrain. So in the summertime, when the wasps are around, you can just close a hive up and just leave one or two entrances open. And it's also like the, the wasp has got to run the gauntlet of a four inch block actually to get inside the hive. So uh -huh. it sort of works very well with that as well. So that's interesting because that's a bit similar to my idea of the periscope hive where the, where the wasp has got to come through a long tunnel yeah. In, yeah. in order to, uh, to get past the bees. Okay, yeah. that's interesting. And mm. you find it's effective against wasps? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, okay. 100%. Okay. Mm. Just one question I've got. Is this the winter quarters yeah. from here down? Yeah. So yeah. You're, this is an insulation um, uh, envelope for the winter, yeah. but doesn't need it in the summer? No, I still managed to get up to like 89% humidity. It's quite a high brood um, temperature. It was up to about 37.5 to 38.5. So it's quite a high brood. Um, Even in winter? In the summertime. In the summertime. Yeah, in the summertime. In the winter time, it sort of just maintains. It doesn't sort of go below minus. It sort of sort of have a main sort of maintains a sort of seven or eight degrees uh, temperature um, span. If you know what I mean. Okay. So it's now we're heading towards the end of May rapidly. Um, what do you expect in terms of honey in, in these supers? Um, this year has been a very bad year actually. But um, some of them, are, and this one in particular, has got a couple a couple super falls. I could. Uh, exclude her out and push it down another one if you know what I mean and mm -hmm. maybe have another but it's just been a very bad bad spring so am I right in saying that you're allowing at the moment you're allowing the Queen to use the two first two supers yeah yeah in okay. the springtime and then I'll have to longer stay and uh, full honey I um, put the Queen excluder in and then push her back down to the bottom right and then take all the supers we may leave one just on top. But in a, in a yeah. decent year, you'd expect to fill, what's that, five supers? Yeah, on a good year, on a good queen, you, okay. yeah, five supers. That's yeah. good, interesting, okay. Yeah. So this one here is a, a classical zest hive with high entrances. Just the one colony? No, I've done a split on the right-hand side. Okay. So there's a, quite a big split and a 
hopefully a virgin queen in there. And I've also put a, actually re in this one with a queen cell as well. Okay. So, but it looks quite strong. Yeah, it? it's a good strong yes. colony. Yeah. Yes. yes, as you'd expect from yeah. a full block zest. And these blocks are thermalite? Yes, yeah. yes, they are. Okay, Just so this is this is uh, an insulating block for those yes, who aren't yeah. familiar with the term. Yeah. So what's next then? What else have we got here? They're all exactly the same over there. Okay, so we've got yeah. another tower here with yeah. uh, again five super... Oh, you've got a brood box and yeah. three, four, three supers. And also super. it's very cheap as well because you think four blocks cost you £2 a block. So yeah. you've actually got a brood chamber for eight quid. You've got a floor for six quid and then you've got a stand for four pound. <laughs> yeah. Blocks Com might have gone up in price since then, but otherwise you've got the yeah. whole base of it. £2.40. And you can fit 12 frames in there, which is almost enough for the like one queen to lay on, especially yeah. in the, like the later time of the year. Yeah. She wants a bit of space in the springtime when she goes up and then put the queen excluder in and let her backfill. I usually take my honey off in two pits and a spring crop and then have a full crop, you know what I mean? So. They're nice and quiet, aren't they? Yeah, They're not. not too uh, bad piece. Like you say, we all get a red <coughs> colony every now and again. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, it's just try and. Mm. And they've got a good lot of honey there as well, so you've got something there to protect. Right. The good Sweet. things with those, though, you can literally just crack that box. And if you're going to get queen cells in there, you'll always get queen cells between the two. You'll be very unlucky mm, if you sure. didn't. So you can just crack the box, tip it over, quick queen inspection, um, and then put it back down again. So it makes inspecting like a five minute or a couple yeah. minute process. Yeah. I notice you've um, got some kind of plastic moulding around just underneath the, um, yeah. the first brood box on there. Is what, what's that stuff? The plastic, basically when I first come up with the idea of doing this, I had like a wooden uh, woodenware around the outside right. and set them on wood. But I found in the winter time, a lot of water would run back into the hive. Mm -hmm. And then that, not no seamer, but it would give them like the scours. So right, right. yeah. It was, it was, I had a really bad year, and then I had to, I had to sort of change yeah. it all around. So I've used Bill's um, plastics, and so the carrier water runs frame. off the carrier, carrier frames. Yeah. So the water right. runs off, and you don't get that right. same sort of um, issue. I, I imagine uh, that the blocks do get wet in a downpour, though. They do soak up, because we've also done that. We've done some testing on the blocks to see how much water they soak up. They do soak up the water. There's no two ways about it. But the bees propolis, the propolis them up very well inside mm. and I think as long as you paint them the runoff you're okay but they do they will if you actually leave them in water the blocks do actually do soak it up because they're aerated blocks if you know what I mean that's mm. the whole point of having the, the blocks is like say what keeps you warm in the winter keeps you cool in the summer so I run a piece of kingspan in right. all my lids yeah. as well Yeah, the lid on my uh, zest hive is entirely made of kingspan and aluminium tape. Yeah. <laughs> it's lasted, yeah. lasted since yeah. I built the hive, so yeah. I'm quite happy so with that. As the bees too. can't get to it, so you're all doing the bees okay. ones are um, insulated as well. Like, I know Bill absolutely hates my lid with a vengeance. But, um, they're, all, they're all well insulated. I don't know if we can get away with this or not. <coughs> that's right, a plastic, so, so. Right, right. So it's a plastic. So you've got Reflectix. Yeah, that's a queen it. It's divider board because I've got yeah. a queen in this end, right? And then I've got a queen at that end as well, like, okay. you know what I mean? So that was a quite dark bees, yeah. Yeah, yeah just my, like I say, my own stuff, I just yeah. keep breeding from year to year. But they're so calm, aren't they? There's they no are reason nice. why they, yeah. these bees in here need to get bad tempered, sure. Nice. So, what don't you like about this, Bill? Don't know. He doesn't <laughs> like the lift up lid. <laughs> Oh, you don't like the lift-up oh, lid? Oh, why no, that's right. When it can just be like three pieces of king span and a couple of bits of metal and a brick right, on right. to hold it all yeah. down. Yeah. It's a measure of complexity that I think uh -huh. is perhaps not You needed. go for the simple approach. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. Fair well, I do use a smoker as well. And Bill doesn't he doesn't use a smoker himself, but I use mm. a smoker just literally, as you can see, bees here. It's just yeah, they gather a little on puff. That drives them down but yeah. also the chalkboard's quite handy for the breeding side of it and oh, you want to so put any notes on it. yeah any notes and yeah. bits and pieces what a great there. idea yeah never never th never occurred yeah. to me to put a blackboard inside a, a yeah. hive but yeah just totally. little bits and pieces for the nice yeah, but what also you don't need here is a hive tool because the way that these sit on that edge there can always be easily broken just by 
picking them up with your fingers. Right, right. So you don't need a hive tool. It and there's no, um, what's the word I'm looking for? There's no uh, lift edge along this, along here at all. It's just it's sitting on, on the, yeah, directly on the, block, on the block. Yeah. Yeah, this on this the is side. just two blocks deep. That's a two mm. blocks deep. Can you just say a few words yeah. about how you came up with the idea for the Zest Hive in the first place, Bill? <coughs> well, with the background that I have as a registered architect, we use them all the time. And we use them because it's a very efficient um, way to keep houses and other buildings warm. It's quite simple. It's The technology is already available. Yeah. It's just in a builder's yard. We need to go and pay £2.40 a block and... For 50 quid you've got a zest hive that's got the internal volume of about four or five uh, british standard brood chambers okay. and super cheap it a zest hive costs uh, a quarter for the comb area if you want to compare it between a zest hive and a wood hive it's four times cheaper right for any given volume so did i do i remember correctly that you you actually designed it for use in countries where uh, hive, where wooden hives get eaten regularly um, by termites and things, or did I imagine that? No, I think you imagined that. I imagined that, that. okay, fair enough. <laughs> but certainly, if termites <laughs> come here, they've got a, they've got a battle on. Right, 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 here. right. Okay, so you you woke up one day and thought, oh, I know, I could build something like Lego Hive. Well, it's with the architect's uh, psychology, isn't it? Right, How right. can this be improved? How can we do more with less? Ah, right. That needs to fully, you know. Yes. Doing more with less is a secret of all scientific uh, advances. Yes, yes, yes. Do more with less. I was going to, so you've, have you always used thermalite or are there other materials that, that no, have I've been used? used thermalite, Thermalite's the stuff. when we sometimes have tried fridges. Oh, okay. There's a character on the um, internet that... Um, um, uses fridges, but uh, we did yes, try I know it and of him. it didn't yes. work all that well. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, um, well, fridges, I guess, come in different widths and so on, which complicates the issue. You've got no standard well, for what we frames. what we need to do is to make uh, a plywood inset, insert that right. goes into the, in, inside the, the deep freeze with it on the top. Got it. But um, and it did just about fit, but okay. it was a bit of a push. There wasn't any room to get any more insulation in around it. Right, so you're just reliant on whatever insulation the fridge manufacturer yeah, chose to put in right. there in the first place. Okay, yeah, but this stuff is um, these thermalite blocks are what 100 mil? Yes, 100 mil thick. Yeah, they're two two um, two two hundred and fifteen millimeters by 100 millimeters by two hundred. Um, no, sorry, four. 440 by 215 by 100 mil. Right, okay. Yes. And that and gives you um, enough room to put a national width frame inside there. Yes. Um, running the other way. Yeah, these are actually, yeah, these are actually cut down, so it's a block slightly okay. longer. If you yeah. Okay. So they are cut down. Yes, I can see yeah. that one's considerably And then this yeah. one here is a, like a, the 600s, which is... Yeah. Well, that's the only downside, is getting hold of the 600s. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah they stopped making time, them, really. You know what I mean? But right. these can overlap. You can have a block from there to there, and then the next one from there to there. I think I did right that. Around, yeah, so I think I did that on mine. So on these, you've got three blocks horizontally, yeah. standing on two blocks, yeah. standing on... Yeah. What? Concrete? No, on on a, more blocks. On, no, on a plinth. On a plinth, yeah, okay. Yeah, just on a plinth, because okay. then you could add sort of, yeah. if it sinks or whatever, you like can just put a spade flare. underneath right, right, any of the corners right. and balance it back up again, can't we? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And on the, on the standard Zest design, you've got um, two horizontal courses of blocks yes. standing on something on a stand or some, oh, yeah, something on a the floor with the blocks laid uh, uh, yeah. right and uh, endwise on that's, yes I've got you yeah it's the same way as I built mine oak six six inch by a piece of oak like well, not a uh, sleeper an old sleeper you know, right right so yeah. based on that so as long as you've got something sturdy yeah. to hold it up and then up, the reason yeah. the wood's on the side is so I've got, got something to actually make my roof off so the roof's got something to hinge against sure if you know what I mean yeah. it's just so much easier having a roof on there right everybody I done a zest hive always ask for a lift up lid like that eventually yeah 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 and it's also insulated there's a piece of kingspan in between the wood as well got it 
N nobody could accuse the zest hive of being a beautiful thing. But, um, well, you could paint flowers over it, or you yeah. know, I mean, decorate yeah, it in you some could. way, grow things up yeah. it, maybe. That's, that's right. Uh, but, yeah, um, yeah, it's a bit tomb-like, um, yeah. as you know, in, on yeah. bare in bare yeah. form, but as let, it were. Let's uh, match bee health and wealth against um, beauty. Which do we want? Well, ideally both, I suppose. But yes, <laughs> yeah, I, right. I grant you that bee health is more important than the end. Yeah. For sure. So we've got a hinge roof and uh, a blackboard, a conveniently positioned blackboard so you can write notes should you choose to. And this is the split end or the... this is the end it was split from? Yeah, this is the end it was split from, but I've okay. also requeened it with a queen cell a okay. few days ago. Look. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we're not going to disturb that bit? No, I'm just going just gonna to lift a few. So we've got nice quiet bees. Yeah. Don't seem to be um, particularly perturbed about being on a cold day. But, yeah, it's not particularly warm today. There we go. You could um, put your queen excluders in. Yeah. See, the, the queen excluders is this part. Right. This part here without the, the board on. So right. basically you can put your queen excluder in. So you rely totally on honey being the other side yeah, of the queen so you excluder. Can actually, yeah, and you can um, push the brood down to six frames if you wanted to. Put the queen excluders in. Um, or also, if you just leave the bees to it, after a good nectar flow, she should gradually be restricted, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. and, and you basically just take out the side frames if you want to. So you, know you give I mean? her enough space to, yeah. to, to lay eggs? Yeah, keep giving her enough tumor. space. Yeah. Right. So basically you can move your... So once we get another honey flow in, I'll put two or three of these frames in the brew chamber and they'll draw them straight down and she'll lay straight on them. That's why it's so good for swarming. You don't get so much swarming. Right, right. Because of... Um, on this... But because they've got to draw the frames out, you won't get as much honey as what you would in a conventional hive. But it is a more let alone way of beekeeping, if you know Sure, I mean. sure. So, so um, do you put any foundation in at all or do you simply no, rely on the edges? just rely on, uh, I sometimes dip the top bars, if you know what I mean, so you've got a bit of, uh, a bit to sort of take away. I'm just going to show a, a close-up of this, because yeah. this is um, Bill's design of a frame, and it's got... Uh, it's a T-bar. It calls it a T-bar, so yes. for obvious reasons, so it's T and, and T in cross-section. And the bees put, uh, take the spine of the honeycomb from the, the tail of the tea and build it down. Right. And uh, it will always hang vertically because right. it's just a point low. It's literally swinging or supported yeah, by the, right. those edges. Right, yeah. right. Where it's been dipped in a bit of wax and yeah. the bees have taken the wax off the And top. the spacing yeah. is dictated by, by this That's right, here, which yeah, is like 35, molding. 38 millimetres, yeah. I can't remember. But if okay. you just spread the honey frames at the edge wider apart, they just build up more more honey yeah. on the frames if you know what I mean, same as castellated spaces in a right, right. In box. Yeah. Yeah. When you uh, buy a box of these frames, there's also wide spaces there, you can make them wider. Right. And you'd put two there and one there to do the wide spacing, but that's not for brood of course, that would be put in once it's drawn out, um, and then they can draw it out more, but that's obviously not for brood, which you need 38 millimetres. So the queen excluder can be turned into a divider simply by attaching. Just taking a, that away. I'll yeah. just, can I just lift that yeah. <coughs> out? The um, it can be turned into a divider simply by attaching a piece of um, what's this stuff called? It's got a name, isn't it? Plastic. Yeah corrugated plastic That's stuff yeah? yeah and it's just got a single bolt in the center there's a hole in the middle there which i'm going to guess might be for That's, feeding yeah i don't personally use that if, I'm right. gonna, if i need to feed i'll just put a, a feeder in there right just one of those sort of national feeders myself personally because i think it just goes better, better. So. so you have um you've confined this part of the colony using a divider. Yeah, and the same with this one, because this has got a queen cell on this end as well. Right, right. And a different entrance. Okay. And at what yeah. point would you, would you, would you in fact extend that brew chamber anymore now, or would you leave it as it is? And no, once we hit a honey flow, once we get the awesome honey flow, right. and then start putting, and she's laying well, I'll put two or three frames in here, and they'll draw them out, and gradually keep expanding it. 
be quite easily to fill up a, one of these with one queen. Having two queens in there, this would fill up and... So I could then take this queen out, yeah. but leave her brood and the bees behind right. for a good honey flow, if you know what I mean. So I take a small split, a bit of brood away, and um, so I've got a, a, right. a new split for another colony, and then I leave all the field force in here. Yeah. But, uh, so Something I've never tried, but I've always wondered about, and perhaps I will try it, is what would happen if you put a colony that end, a colony this end, Queen excluders either side and leave the centre for them both to work and fill up with honey. I've done that as well. You've done but that? Yeah, the, it's a good queen in a colony like this will fill it up. That's the trouble. Right. Yeah, so eventually you'll have to take something away. So you'd have to remove honey yeah, more quickly? Yeah, move, yeah, move, yeah. but sometimes okay. it's getting it, you know, when it's ripened and it's been capped off and everything else. When you want to take honey, it never seems to be, to be ready. Like, so, um, okay, okay. Yeah. One more point about this train. Yeah. And that is, when you put that into a, the middle of a colony with mm -hmm. brood each side, you don't split the brood because there's not because there's a, simply an air gap. So yeah. it, you, you can go down, two two with bees already, and then a clean one, then two and another one. So you can go it. on. Got it. I use almost exactly the same system. I, I've got a Celotex roof, but I use the Reflectix as a, yeah, a peelable layer. And it's nice for the winter time because you can have a bit of a glance in there. Sure, sure. And all year round, I just lift up the lid and show people go in there, whatever the temperature is. Yeah. It doesn't really, I say it doesn't affect them too much. Probably the bees will probably think, what the bloody hell are you doing yeah, lifting yeah. that lid up? But yeah, it's, um, and like you say, for a day like today, they seem quite yeah. enough sort of bunch, don't they? Yeah. Have you ever attempted to actually monitor the humidity level and temperature in here? I haven't, but Bill has. I have in my smaller ones because I was keen on seeing if it was going to work with the smaller hives. But Bill's done this, and if you in his book, there's a whole big spill on the humidity. So basically, the bees um, forage during the day, and then in the evening, the humidity always goes up at, in the evening. If you know what I mean, as they're fanning the honey off. If you know what I mean, so obviously the water turns to humidity. And um, yeah, you got anything to say on that, Bill? No, no, that's right. I mean, so humidity is supposed to be you... the varroa killer. Right, right. And um, but uh, anything that uh, um, reduces varroa must be a good thing. I so mean, do you want to reduce? I run wooden hives. I've got nothing against wooden hives. Um, on the commercial side of it, with the rapeseed and stuff like that, you you've got to be able to move them. And, they, and they, produce, so. they do produce more honey. There is that side of it, if you know what I mean. But there's a lot more work's got to go into a wooden. Right, hive. right. But um, these ones I make up here, it's, it's only good for a permanent apiary. Yeah. If you've got, if you've got to start moving stuff like this, it's, it's yeah. impossible. If you know sure, I mean. sure. So it's horses and courses. It's uh, right. Um, it should be said. I think I haven't said it yet. Is yeah. that these blocks aren't actually cemented together in any way. No, They're, it's just. It's um, simply propolis. gravity and goodwill that's and holding them together. Propolis. And propolis. Yeah, yes. the propolis. <laughs> they do make them <laughs> pretty yeah. firm. Like. Yeah, yeah. We did start off, start off with top trickle ventilation. That hunts the holes on this side. But yeah. You just didn't need it, if you know what I mean. Yeah. You think they're better just with entrances yeah. one side? Yeah, just for one side. Yeah. If yeah. you've, um, when you take uh, cutouts and people's houses and buildings and stuff like that, you, you just find you usually have that one entrance. Sure. Um, uh, bees are pretty adaptable, I know, but yeah, to try to hinder them as less as possible if we can. Yeah, yeah. I know it doesn't always work like that. Well, my reference when I'm thinking about bees and what they need is always the, the hollow tree, you know, and that's the, the classic, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what I've noticed with hollow trees is that they tend to have rather small entrances, yeah. number one. Yeah. They tend to be somewhere, not necessarily at the top, but certainly part way up the colony rather than at the bottom of the colony, although yeah. it's not yeah. invariable by any yeah. means because trees aren't. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, the, the size of the entrance seems to be... A, a common feature obviously i guess most the average entrance is, is actually made by a woodpecker rather than a bee yeah. so but the bees take advantage but they do mm -hmm. propolize it up rotten at a time branches. oh rotten branches yes yeah. absolutely and lightning strikes and things like yeah. that of course can so the entrances will vary a lot but yeah. i have noticed on occasions when i've given bees a bigger entrance than I would necessarily be inclined to, that they've tended to propolise them up anyway, yeah, exactly. especially towards winter. Well, well, there's two natural places for wild bees to nest, and one is a cave, and the other's a tree. <coughs> a tree, the hole, whatever size the hole is, the cavity inside is fixed. Sure. It may be too big, it may be too small, and the bees can't do anything about it. Right. You can. 
Right. And it's um, if it's a cave, it's nice, consistent temperature, uh -huh. which is fine for the bees, but it's too big, really, for them. Right, right. Gen as a general view. So, the net, just because it's a natural place where bees go, doesn't mean to say that it's designed for them. Sure, sure. It, just it doesn't mean it's ideal. Convenient. Yeah. And it seems to me that uh, what we've tried to do here is actually design something like we would a house for a human. Mm. And it's just providing it for them to make best use of. And as it expands, we give them more space. And sure. as it shrinks, we give them less space. All of which is good for the bees. Absolutely. Yeah. We have to, I suppose I have to interject there and say that, that bees' needs for things like humidity and temperature are quite different to ours. Yeah, <laughs> um, well, that's right. We couldn't yeah. live at this in the in the conditions inside a brood yeah. nest at, at all. But nevertheless, the principles remain consistent, yeah? yeah? Yes, that's right. Okay. Yes. We can do better than nature on this occasion. Ah, yes, interesting, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Mm. Well, yeah, I suppose the, the key to it really is, is, is bees' adaptability, isn't it? I mean, they, they are capable of adapting to such yeah. a wide range of conditions and uh, you know, as shown by the widespread yes, uh, nature right. of their uh, yeah. of their species, yeah. Yeah, they've got a big range. Yeah. But nevertheless, if we, I mean, you could say that our main motivation for keeping bees is honey, or has been historically. Yeah. Uh, and so, in order to uh, get the Mm, I hesitate to use the word maximum, but get to, to strike a balance so that we're getting the, the amount of honey, the sort of amount of honey that we want, while also maintaining healthy yeah. and productive bees. Um, yeah, there's nothing contradictory about it, is there really? Well, there shouldn't be, let's hope, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, the, 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 there can be, certainly, bees can be pushed hard yeah. to produce honey uh, or to do pollination, wh which isn't necessarily good for them. but. Yeah. Your, it seems to me that your aim is to provide conditions under which they can thrive and that we can Absolutely. also... Right sure. on the button, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. It's all about you. the bees. Everything else, honey and pollination comes off. If the bees are good, then everything else is good. Right. It's a real fundamental of the environment. Absolutely. James, can I just ask you, I won't point the camera at you because I know you want, you want to be kind of just shadowy in the background yeah. um <laughs> but Bill loves the limelight. <laughs> <laughs> so james what made you go this route in your beekeeping um just i wouldn't say the welfare of the bee but just trying to sort of give them a helping hand as best i can and and um i think what keeps you warm in the winter keeps you cool in the summer um, i got the impression that bees eat a lot more honey in the mm. summer trying to keep their hive cool and what they do uh, heat in their hive in the winter time so hence the kingspan and the roof and going down the, the route of the blocks um, I found with the, the zest hive it's like you say it's a let alone bee beekeeping um, not quite as much honey as I would like so hence that's why I went down the route of uh, the thermalite the mini right. thermalite to try and have the balance of the, the um, insulation so th this this style of house is is James's um, adapt adaptation of the zest hive yeah. principle of having a thoroughly insulated lower chamber, yeah. at least, and then adding supers when appropriate. That might appeal to people who maybe don't want full size zest hives and have got a, a stack of uh, national equipment yeah, kicking around. Right. Yeah. I mean, you could yeah. do it with Langstroth as well, I guess, couldn't yeah. you? Yeah. Like you say, just trying to work on the principle of the humidity and the temperature and and even like the wasp protection with the holes, if you know what I mean. If you're a wasp and you've got to run the gauntlet against that lot, good luck, if you know what I mean. So this gives you the, the benefit of an insulated chamber and the and for your from your perspective the benefit of more honey, uh, yeah. the greater honey yeah. crop. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But you've got to be in the bees a bit more. It's not like yeah. a let alone beehive when you can go in Absolutely. three or four frames in and walk away from it. And you've still got, the, you've got to lift boxes, Yeah, you've still got to lift boxes this. and still do everything else. Yeah. But the only difference yeah. is, it's just trying to, sort of maybe trying to go down that route of being treatment free, if I can, by using the humidity. If, if, like you say, I've had a bad year with, because um, I do do my counts, and I've had a bad years when I've had no honey flow. If mm -hmm. You have a higher amount, um, higher mite count, but if you have a good honey flow, and that, which I presume would be a higher humidity level, you seem to get less mites. 
Now that's interesting. That's the first time I've heard that being spoken. Um, mm. So, so what you're saying is that when there's a good strong honey flow and therefore there's a lot of nectar being exposed to the air inside the hive, yeah. that is likely to increase the humidity and therefore keep the mites numbers down. At least yeah, that, that's, that's the way we're thinking. Yeah, that's the way you're sort of thinking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and conversely, when there's not so much of a honey flow, yeah. there's less moisture in the hive, le lower humidity, mm -hmm. therefore yeah. the mites are more likely to... Yeah, but it's no different than any other hive then, is it? If you know right, what I mean. right, right. Yeah. And then it's down to the bees being hygienic, and is there enough of that about at the moment? We don't know, do we? So, uh -huh. good strong colonies, uh, which are quiet, and produce a lot of honey. That's the, that's the route I'm sort of taking. Right. And then just relying on everybody else's drones in the area to... Give me a good, come back with a good bee. <laughs> right, right. Have you tried um, uh, building uh, a zest vertical hive? A vertical would, zest hive. Which, yes, which would um, essentially compose of the floor on paving slab. Uh -huh. and then Same as that, but a two, layer, two layers of um, blocks on top of that. Oh, okay. And to use yeah. the zest plastic yeah, frames in yeah. there. And then a queen excluder and traditional um, yeah. wood boxes as there. Yeah. Oh, okay, so the, the height of the zest plastic frame is equivalent to two, two brood. Blocks. That's yeah. right. Right, yeah. although it's divided into three, yeah. it's actually equivalent it's to just two convenient brood. convenient okay. the blocks are 215 millimetres high, which is a pretty standard uh, frame. Right, yeah. right. It does work, but the only downside I have with that is you can crack a box and you can check for a queen cell. But when you've got the double deeps, you can't. It means you've got to pull every you've got frame to out. all the frames out, yeah, yeah. yeah and because yeah. they're that sort of frame when they build their own wax, they can hide queen cells sure sure so much easier so but, but by having this way is you can crack the crack the box and you check for queen cells right but but by but using the, um, the zest frames you're more likely to have to have higher humidity and probably be better for the bees mm -hmm. because the the, the the brew chamber will be actually and that's how a, a beehive wants to be set up if you know what I mean sure with the brood in a big oval with plenty of room it would be better for the bees but there's just you can't check for queen cells and you yeah and you yeah. can't take the honey <laughs> so it's it all depends on what you want from your bees really yeah. I suppose yeah so this style of hive might would a, well potentially appeal to people who have a static site obviously because yeah. you can't move them no, you can't move uh, them uh, likewise yeah. the zest hive cheap to run cheap to buy yeah if you know what I mean cheap to, and if you like doing a bit of DIY and mucking about which I did it passes the time of day, like if you know what I mean. Sure, sure. So you could, I mean, literally, all you would need to buy is is a few national supers. Yeah. Um, and most people have got them already. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. If you're, so if you're doing um, conversion, it means you can a combination of the two. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's an experiment for people to try who who are so inclined. Um, it's it's a cheap experiment. You, those blocks don't cost much, and uh, if you've got a space to put them, uh, that you're not going to you know, suddenly change your mind and want to build a conservatory on or something, um, then it, it's certainly uh, a hive that seems to work very well mm. and uh, produces a lot of honey. So yeah. There's a lot yeah. of, um, like you say, with your wooden boxes, there's a lot of merits with them. If you want to do reversals, overwinter reversals or anything like that, it's easy to do with a wooden box. Right. But it just means there's a bit more manipulations if you wanted to change the brew frames down, if you know what I mean, because I pushed everything down so the queen's got plenty of room to come up and lay uh, at a later date. So there's there's pros and cons with it, like any beekeeping, and you just got to sort of work around it. If right. You know what I mean. James has really got to grips with this business of beekeeping. He, when we first met, I don't think he was a beekeeper, but he's moved the whole concepts and the information on and deploying the basic principle of zest, highly insulated external envelope. Right. So I do congratulate him, really. He's done really well. Mm -hmm. He's moved it on a lot further than I have. Well, I think so we need to call this the James Hive, don't we? Because yeah, in the absence yes. of uh, yes. full information about his name, we're gonna, yes. just going to have to call it the James Hive from yeah, now but on. What I love so. about it, really, is the fact that um, it's the winter quarters, and, then, and that's well insulated, great, and then you put on the summer supers which sure. is, seems to be entirely appropriate yeah you know? totally yeah for our climate certainly it's yeah. uh, ideal well, you say it's been a battle with getting keeping the water out with um you think your national boxes just sit on top of each other the rain hits it and washes off so you have to be careful with that yeah. and this this hopefully 
this winter was a good winter for me and we had a lot of rain and they they managed to come through to come through come through the winter nicely if you know what yeah. i mean but um previous to that with the when i had wooden um lips on there they used to um get a bit of water in there and it could give them dysentery like if you know what i mean it wasn't no seam but it was dysentery like right. so. drawing on your experience as an architect um particularly um does that make sense that these hives this style of hive might well be appropriate for for uh, locations where you've got things like termites that eat wood. Well, it did actually start out as a venture for third world use. Okay. And one of the things that um, they've got in mostly in the third world is bamboo. Right. And I made the zest um, frame initially was made out of bamboo, the same exactly the same configuration, and it was held together by um, paper clips. Each junction was held together by paper clips. Wow. It's all on the uh, the website. Oh, of course, yeah, I remember now. Yes, the frames themselves were, were bamboo, weren't they? Yes, yes I remember seeing And then, of course, that. it came to the point of the external envelope. And what they do have in the third world, because I spent some time in Nigeria and Middle East, what they do have there is um, uh, concrete blocks. Yeah. And it seems to me that concrete blocks were the ideal material for... Um, the third world, which will moderate the the temperature right, right. of the bees downwards in in the in the day and upwards in the night. Right. So, so not only are they good for keeping bees warm, it's thought they also keep bees cool, cool yeah, in, in right. hot countries. Yes. Yeah. And that there will be good reason for painting them white, for example. Yes, but it, it's all about moderating the temperature because then the bees don't have to do it and. Uh, which is why they are so willing to go into caves, because right. it's a constant temperature. It's just looking around and seeing what's natural and applying, um, I suppose, architectural design skills, if that's the right word, to right. it. Right. But um, it's, I think it's certainly overdue. I think that uh, um, the third world um, doesn't need us to ship out um, wood out there. It just doesn't yeah. seem to me to be appropriate. Sure, I, I think Africa is littered with uh, with well-meaning right. schemes where people Absolutely. shipped over Langstroth hives and they were either turned into furniture or eaten by termites. So, <laughs> yeah, or stolen. Or stolen. They can be indeed. picked up and yeah. stolen, which yeah, is yeah. which is not the case. You're not going to do that with a zest heavy, hive. Heavy block hive. For no. sure. For sure. Yeah. Which is a uh, you know given the unfortunate trend in this country for bees uh, to get stolen uh, it's not, hasn't happened yes. in my area that I'm aware of but I know it has happened in other areas yes. um, that uh, there's a good case for bait making hives that literally cannot be stolen that's right <laughs> yes that is a, a, wasn't a deliberate intention no and, but um, nevertheless that is uh, the truth yeah. yeah okay thanks Bill yeah right what we're we doing now Let's have a look, have a look at this one, one. yeah I would say for better queen rear and that sort of stuff. Like, you know, I mean, okay. They're going to be as good, nice tempered as the others. They will be. Hopefully. Okay. So that's basically a divider board. <coughs> okay. So that's made of wire, both sides. Right. So the bees are not touching. So it's a queen right. So you've simply got um, you've got you've got airflow through, but not bee flow. Yeah. So the okay. queen's down this end. She's right. actually quite a lot of quite, quite a lot of frames and a lot of space. But you put the queen down this end, leave it 24 hours, leave it 24 hours. I always feed them at the same time. And these guys start making cells. Yeah. There we go. Oh no, you've you've, you've grafted these. No, you've, yes. Yeah, you grafted have. these. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Okay, nice set of screens. So nice and easy. It's all there in front of you. It takes you 10 seconds to put that in wherever you want to put that in. Right. So long as you find the queen, you then yeah. put that in. Um, if, if you want more bees at this end, which is quite a lot of nurse bees anyway, you can actually hook that out and just put this in. Just drop that in. Yep. Yeah. And then the bees can go back, pass back and forth. So you have even more bees on the queen cells if you wanted to. And then you could also use these bees to make your splits up. So it's quite an easy. So you're doing everything in one box. Everything which is, in one which box. Which is great. Yeah, yeah. It's very it's similar pretty, to what I do with sort of wires. Yeah. Fact, yeah. It's just there all in front of you, like yeah. you know what I mean. So, yeah. but you can sort of put her on 
four frames if you need to, drop that in. Like, usually I take that out after 24 hours and then put one of these in, but I, I left that behind and I didn't have it, so they've had to. So there you go. But nice and easy. Yeah, and that's quite these. Yeah. And then uh, pop those cells that go in me poly nukes over there, little free frame poly nukes, which I take off of my production hives just to bring them back to stop them swarming and then make all my splits up like that. Right. Mm. And you make them in Apideas? Apideas or, or, or ID, the BS the poly nukes, yeah, yeah, the three frames, or six frames, or three frames either side. Right. Just do that, two two frames in there, a frame of uh, brood, and a frame of bees, and an empty frame, and then feed them on top, and then just pop the cell in. So right. you start drawing out a frame, and yeah, all, the fr all the cells are already made up, so you need to don't need them to finish the cells or anything like that. Right, right. It's just easy because it's in front of you. But you'll again, you'll have to. I make some splits out of this because you've got to bring it back down again. Otherwise, you're going to run run the risk of swarming. Yes. So yes. Then, yeah, and then give her more space again. And then once I want to do the same manipulation, I just put her back down on the three frames again. You right. know what I mean? And then there we go. You might have to check for the old queen cell if they've drawn out one or two others. If you know what I mean. Right. Right. Um, which they will just just yeah. to annoy you. Yes, yeah. to annoy you. Yeah, yeah. I generally yeah. yeah. But the other option to do is just cage the queen up for three days, if you want, for three or four days. Yeah. And then all the eggs and larvae will be gone past the age. Right, right. If you know what I mean, and then you know you're not going to get anything. A bit like when you requeen a high. Sure, think. sure. Yeah. So, but nice and easy to work with, and then yeah, you've got yeah. the board if you want to. If you're better than I am at writing notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have that trouble too. Yeah. And also, the bees don't, because the bees are coming in at the front, even when the flying bees are coming in at the front, they're actually mm -hmm. doesn't, they're not bothering you because yeah. you're here. Yeah. yeah. Right. And you've almost got yourself a bit of a barrier between you and the bees. Absolutely, yeah. So it sort of works. Well, that's exactly what I do again with top bar hives. Yeah. You have the. Uh, it basically hive. is a top bar hive, really, isn't it? it, it pretty much, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Got the yeah. False apart from the fact it's got frames. Got the, and yeah, and you've got the false floor. So, yeah. you, if you know what I mean, so you've just got a standard. The British standard frames, right? And then you've got a false floor, so it which was is a, made from what? It was a uh, the blocks again. So oh, it I was a zest, okay. a zest hive, and then I just modified you just it. Just filled up the space. So you've tripled the yeah. thermal capacity. That's yeah. 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 So yeah. and it's ideal for drawing out frames and so forth. So yeah. yeah. You come to say hello. And then we have a look at the other hive. And then it's a slightly different way of making the splits. I don't know how it's set up. So this is an alternative way of raising queens in this box. So basically you run your queens, you run your queen in the middle. And then you take a... The middle being, you've got two yeah, dividers. So, yeah, two dividers. So basically run the queen here. And when, when the colony gets big enough, you can then take a small split at this end. So that's basically eggs or larvae at the right age, mm -hmm. a frame of food and a couple frame of baby bees, and do the same at this end. Then I also shake in more nurse bees at either end mm -hmm. and just leave them to it. And then if you go back in after four days, any cells that's sealed, I take down, okay. which generally nine times out of ten the bees just seem to know and get it right and then and then they, they produce one or two cells they don't it's not usually like a load of panic cells about 10 or 15 cells it's usually just two or three cells because mm -hmm. they're close enough to the queen to get her pheromones right, right. but further enough away from the queen to say this ain't, something's not quite right here right, if you know what i mean right. so you generally pull down two or three frames two or three eggs on a frame and then you can just take those away or just leave them to it and the queen will come back or come back to the middle and kill your main queen. <laughs> yeah. Very impressive. So it's an easy way of... Yeah. And then I've got a feeder at this side and I put, always put a, 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 an empty frame an empty frame in. So the bees have got something to do, if you know what I mean. I don't want them sure. getting too bored, yeah, chewing yeah. the frames up or anything stupid like that. So, um, but I will, <laughs> nine times a time, I usually take these away. I'll take these bees. So I put a breeder queen in the hive itself, generally. And then take these bees or queen cells, like cut the queen cells out mm -hmm. and take them away. 
but your options, you've got plenty of options there. It's, it's, yes. And it's also a good place to get new frames drawn out because you want something, you want something for them to do all the time. It's sort of quite a sort of. But again, it's like you say, it is a glorified top bar hive, but just sort of modified and, and without that shape. Mm. You've got to, so it's easy for the frames. You just put foundation and frames in there and just let. Yeah. I'm interested to notice how just how, how black some, most of these bees are. They're, they're, they do vary quite a lot. There's yeah, there is a bit of variation. In there. Yeah, you like know, you they're say. definitely mongrels, but there's a lot yeah. of a lot of very dark bees in here, which yeah. is very really interesting. Yeah. yeah. Considering that we are not at the you know western extremity of the country of yeah. Cornwall or Devon, yeah, uh, we're in Somerset here, which is yeah. quite heavily populated with yeah. beekeepers. I'm a member of the uh, Somerset Beekeeping Association. And we do try and do a lot of um, in-house breeding ourselves, if you know what mm. I mean, and queen rearing on the site and so forth. Yeah. We don't sort of tend to buy too much in, if you know what I mean, if we can help it. It's sure. basically all our own sort of stock, just picking like the best and the quiet bee you've got, yeah. really. Well, it's good to see that, you know, when you're breeding for health, temperament and productivity, that you're still ending up with, you know, very native-influenced bees, should we say because um, you know some people think black bees are unmanageable and bad tempered and that sort of thing but clearly that's not the case uh, when you consider the weather conditions now they're shocking yeah there's no bees out there flying there's no nectar flow at all no. now so everything everybody's at home um they like say you get good days and bad days we all know what beekeeping's like don't sure. we? you know what i mean one day you could almost go in without a veil and the next day you yeah. certainly need one easy to work because the bees are right in front of you all the time yeah, yeah, yeah. so you can literally just yeah. you don't have to take a box apart to get to a, uh, a frame you can literally just get yes. that frame out and it meets you for load lift as well. yeah and if you use this stuff you can put two or three smaller ones on just overlap it and then if you just want to go into this part of the box yeah. right. you can okay. so again yeah again like a top bar hive the heaviest thing you have to lift is one frame mm. yeah uh, as opposed to a box often yeah, yeah. Excellent. Well, that's really interesting. Thank you, James. Any time. I haven't been here for a while, and I will say that I'm extremely impressed. Mm. And it's the inquiry and the testing mm. and the desire to um, check a new system or something that I, I'm finding very admirable. It's, it's one that I'm not up with. I tend to be omnifocused rather than experimental. Right, right. And in that way, James is uh, an exemplar. I love these, these, this type, the James Hive, we're going to call it the James, yeah, that's right. hive. The James um, hive. I love this idea. So essentially insulate, as you see, you can, can it's all the, your existing kit that people have mm. got, but yeah. with the added benefit of a nice, healthy, yeah. highly insulated Absolutely. space for the winter. Mm. Yeah. I mean, what more could you want, really? It's work in progress, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. I've, I've had good years with them, I've had bad years, and I'm hopefully do, each year is one step closer to getting it right, if you know what I mean. I, I'm just also wondering whether there's an American equivalent of these blocks. Um, no. There isn't? No, trust me. Oh, they've got them in Australia and New Zealand. Oh, okay. And there's some... Um, in Australia, there's somebody who's just built four zest hives mm. deploying this sort of insulated block. And in New Zealand, um, they I don't think they have the, the insulated blocks like they do in Australia. But um, I've been sending stuff out there. So that's a, sat on these ones, like, you know what I mean? So this yeah. one's a new, newish colony in there. So these frames are sat on this plastic moulding, which is... Um, Bill's standard zest hive kit. It's yes. Cut down, isn't it? Yeah, that's slightly cut. Cut down yeah. in which direction? Down and vertically. Yeah, so because you don't want to give them too much bee space. Yeah, so so oh, it was that I high see. on Bill's. Right. So I've cut it down. I see. Yeah, so you cut, you shortened it. Yeah. My lugs. So that's a, this is a new queen from this year. Right. So hence I took the old. Yeah. The yeah. old one is actually over there in that box because I use her as a breeder queen this year. Okay. This is a that would have been a second season, so this is one of her offspring. So it's not a bad brew pattern. No. Right, right. On there. Okay, I see now the purpose of these because yeah, yeah, because I was thinking, I was looking at it thinking, well, what are those frames resting on? But they're actually yeah. resting on yeah. plastic mouldings on the blocks themselves. Yeah, you've shortened this height here. Yeah, 
in order to uh, accommodate the the frame, but not with a great big space yeah. ab um, gap above it. Yeah. Yeah. And so then the 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 supers sit directly onto this edge. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. They sit on this edge. Okay. Got yeah. it. Now. And that's what stops the water from going in. So the yes, water runs off the dam, the, yeah, yeah onto there yeah. and onto there. The bees sure. sort of propolise it up and in, inside, if you know what I mean, and it seems to work. Yeah, Before yeah. I had the wood round, and then the box, so the wood would be sat there like that, and then the box sat on the wood, yeah. and it runs down onto there, and then it suddenly, it might find a spot and start running into the hive. Sure. Yeah. Then we had all that cold, frosty weather, and it was freezing inside the hives, yeah. and I was making more of a problem for myself and actually solving. So right, right. this, with all the rain we had this year, this, this way worked. And right. It was certainly a wet year we had. So... so yeah. People who don't necessarily have this moulding or have the means to cut it down, it, it's just an L shape um, of, of a height that is just fractionally higher than the height of the, um, the thickness of the tongue of the frame. Um, and I guess there are a number of ways one could achieve that result, but that's the, that's the essence of it. You see, this is a cut down zest component. Yeah. But what we've taken to doing because this is a very complicated plastic bit of plastic mm. if you, if we put a 20, 20 20 millimeters by 40 millimeters wood frame all the way around yeah that performs the same as there. that's and actually that what i did when i built the, my zest hive yeah. i actually put, made a wooden frame exactly like that yeah mm. so you could do it with wood but you might want to stick it down with silicone or something yeah. to stop any water creeping underneath. Or you could no, make it a piece of wood that overhangs so it will run off. Yes, yeah. yes. In fact, a, a sloping surface would actually be an advantage, yeah. wouldn't it, from that point of view. So, am I right to say you're giving the Queen that brood box as well as the lower chamber yeah. to lay in? Yeah. Okay. But she probably won't need it, so I'll probably right. push her back down right. and then take that as a, take that as a honey super. But, um, yeah, it's been such a poor year. Are we going to be brave enough to go into that one on a day like today? Which one? That, that one. one. Uh, Lisa, Lisa might yeah, see. give it a while. See a hive that's got a few more bees in it. Okay. If you want to look for a... You know, I mean, at least you can explain. I'll put, I'll put my hat yeah, on just in case. But yeah. yeah, there you go. There you go. So there's a good uh, 50 mil of um, of spandex... Um, Spandex, <laughs> yeah. Celotex or Celotex. King Span, um, and a, a cavity there for feeding fondant. Yeah, or you can take that out and use it to feed syrup sure. if, you, if you want to require. Yes. So, this is quite a strong colony. So, they've got no, there's no queen excluders in there, so they've got the run of the hive, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So, She'll go over here, just give her as much room as she can, and then, as a, on a good honey flow, they'll push her back down anyway because she wants to put her bees by the entrance. So. Don't get that with the you know. <laughs> Well, like you say, there's a bit mm -hmm. of, ne bit bit of, of nectar, nectar in there. Yeah. There's not any rapeseed in the area, but you mm. don't really know where they've got it. So, but not, not really quite there to be... I know you can do a shake test, but... Those are of a strong colony. Sometimes they can eat as much honey as yeah, they like. Yeah, that's right. You get a Sometimes cold spell and... Yeah. yeah. So I'm gradually working all these old frames out. These are the ones with, what's it called, spaces. But mm -hmm. rather than waste the frames, I'll actually put them on and... Um, get them to fill them with, back fill them with honey, and mm. then I put them in the appy melter and just help melt them down in the appy melter. Right. And then they'll be discarded, right. if you know what I mean. I do try and change a few frames out every year, but it's not always easy. Yeah. If you know what I mean. And then, then go into here. Right, so now we're down into the bottom insulated box, and they look uh, very strong. And so you can just tilt them and just do your queen if you know what I mean. I, li sure. I leave the cups as long as there's not an egg in there. Yeah, I just yeah. leave them because I know where they're to then, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. So again, but they've slowed right down on their bre um, brood rearing now because yeah. of the, the weather and just basically just steam them through all their honey. Yeah. So I always have a smoker just because of um, 
getting the bees off the, the bars. Mm -hmm. Nicely. And if you've got a good strong colony, if you end up having a few holes about the place, the bees soon patch them up. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah. You see we've had, had a dandelion flow by the colour of the frames, can't you? Oh yeah. If you know what I mean? So it was a good flow, but they've basically eaten more than they produce this year. Mm. But, um, yeah, it's been a slow old spring for sure. Yeah, it's been awful year really, isn't it? Same sort of thing. You find her down in the bottom to start off with, and then eat her way up, and then by the springtime she's got her brood up, up, up the top. Right. If you know what I mean? Just put them back together away there, off. Uh. Yeah, once upon a time you would have pulled up, but they uh, colonies trying to keep them all exactly the same all with the same insulation and mm -hmm. so everything's pretty easy you know what I mean they work and then the insulated roof at the end and then the good old fashioned right. yeah I'll just have me box from be back <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, that's really interesting. Thank you, James. Yeah. It's been really. Anytime. Uh, you want to say more welcome to come whenever you want. Sure, thank you. Yeah.